All right, and whenever you're ready, your mic is on, so you're all good. And three, two, one, go. Get out of the way. <laughs> this is attorney Joe Fishko, and today I'm gonna to talk about workers' compensation. Uh, the workers' compensation laws uh, began around the turn of this century, and of course, that's the 19th century to the 20th century, uh, in all 48 states. Remember, back then, uh, Alaska and Hawaii weren't states yet. So all 48 states were faced with the same problem. Uh, our nation was turning from a agrarian or a farming type of uh, nation uh, to an industrial nation. And of course, in the factories and the coal mines and the steel mills, uh, workers were getting injured and there wasn't any system to deal with that. Um, to, uh, for a worker to recover, uh, they had to prove the employer was negligent. Uh, that was rarely the case. And frankly, <laughs> back then, uh, if you went to the courts, you, even if it was the case, you probably wouldn't have any luck. But uh, that's why the workers' compensation system came in in all 48 states. Each state has its own system. Uh, Pennsylvania has a very good system. Uh, if I can be frank with you, West Virginia has a terrible system. Uh, they uh, got the attorneys out of the system, and um, some people don't like attorneys might say, well, that's great. Uh, but uh, what you're left with is the insurance companies run the system. So uh, all of the um, questions are by law decided in the insurance company's favor. And the law itself is designed, frankly, to kick people off workers' compensation. So it's a dysfunctional system. In Pennsylvania, uh, there are special workers' compensation judges and they're very knowledgeable, and they're also very fair, and uh, they decide disputes. So when workers' compensation came into play over 100 years ago, uh, there was a uh, trade-off, and this is what it is. If you're injured at work, you don't have to prove that your employer was negligent. Uh, and that's different than what they call tort law. You know, if uh, you get in an auto accident, in order to recover anything, you have to prove the other guy was negligent. Uh, if you slip and fall in a business or somewhere like that, again, you got to prove that the business was negligent and you weren't negligent. None of that is in workers' compensation. Uh, indeed, most work injuries occur without an employer's uh, negligence. Uh, you've lifted something uh, 10,000 times in your life. This time you lift it up and you get a ruptured disc in your back. There's no uh, negligence there. It just happened. But you are injured and you are missing work and you need medical treatment. So here was the trade-off. Uh, you don't have to prove negligence to get workers' compensation, but you give up your right to recover for pain and suffering against your employer. Uh, so again, you know, if you're in an auto accident and uh, you're injured and the other uh, driver was negligent, uh, then you get lost wages, you get your medical bills paid, you get uh, pain and suffering. In workers' compensation, uh, they do have to pay your medical bills, they do have to pay your lost wages, but there is no recovery for pain and suffering. So that's sort of where it all begins. So with such a simple system, uh, the question is, well, how did disputes arise? And I'll be honest with you, in many cases, they don't. Um, I have a lot of clients uh, that have called me throughout the years who are injured at work. Uh, I advise them what to do. I don't have to get involved. Uh, they get better, they go back to work. Uh, their medical bills are paid, their lost wages are paid. Uh, there aren't any disputes. But of course, sometimes there are. So I wanna talk a little bit about how to try to avoid disputes and what to do when a dispute arises. So the first thing, uh, and you would think that this is fairly obvious, but oddly enough, uh, 
a lot of people don't do it. If you're injured at work, report it. Most employers will take a uh, accident report and handle it properly. Uh, sometimes you'll get a supervisor saying, oh, we have too many injuries or uh, we've never had an injury and we want to keep our perfect record, don't report it, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank your supervisor and report it. Um, a lot of times there aren't any witnesses to work injuries. Uh, sometimes there are, but very often there aren't any witnesses. Uh, and if you don't report it, uh, you can create a problem right away. Um, I remember, uh, well, this is the worst one I've ever seen. But when uh, Stoney's Brewery was around, I had uh, a uh, client that worked there and he slipped and fell and he injured his back and it turned out to be a serious injury, a ruptured disc. So uh, his supervisor says, well, when you go to the emergency room, tell him you did it at home. So that's what the guy does. And he comes in and uh, he didn't tell me that. I get the record before I filed the uh, claim. And I said, well, what do you expect me to do with this when you go into the emergency room and said you fell at home? Uh, so that was about the worst I've ever seen. Uh, but a lot of times, um, let's say that you get injured on Friday afternoon and you figure, hey, uh, it's the afternoon, I've got the whole weekend to recover, I'll be fine on Monday. Well, you report on Monday because you're not fine, and what do you think the employer says? Yeah, that's right. How do we know you didn't do it over the weekend? So if you don't report an injury, you are asking for trouble. Um, there are some restrictions. If you don't report the injury within 21 days of the injury, you can't get a full recovery. And if you wait 120 days, which is about four months, uh, on the 121st day you report it, you are out of court. You can't do anything at that point. So report the injury. So you've reported it. What happens? Well, for the first 90 days after the injury, your employer can determine what doctor you should treat with. Uh, when this first came in, uh, I was afraid that uh, they would always be sending you to bad doctors. Um, in Uniontown or Fayette County, rural areas, that hasn't been a problem. Um, what's evolved over the years is almost all of the employers uh, say go to MedExpress. Uh, it's cheaper for them than going to the hospital, and it's quicker for you, and MedExpress in many injuries is perfectly adequate. Uh, so that, that's what they will designate. Uh, if it is a more serious injury, we're usually talking about orthopedic injuries, and in a place like Uniontown, there's only a couple of orthopedic groups. Uh, there's the orthopedic group. Uh, and there's uh, Dr. Sheba's, you know, the two brothers. Um, and they're perfectly fine, if I can be frank with you. Uh, so they will be your panel doctors. Now in Allegheny County, sometimes it's a problem. Um, I had a uh, client that worked at Burger King and uh, she uh, slipped and fell and really had a serious injury to her shoulder. and. I know the best shoulder doctors in Pittsburgh, and I would have sent her there, but the uh, uh, it was within 90 days. She couldn't wait 90 days to get the surgery, so they sent her to somebody that I think is a bad doctor. Um, he did the surgery. Uh, he didn't do a good job. Uh, she basically was disabled pretty much for life as a result of that. After the 90 days, I sent her to one of the competent doctors and he gave her a second surgery to fix it, uh, but it was a mess. And uh, that can happen, but in again, in Fayette County, it's usually not a, not a problem. So you are now off work. Uh, you're getting your uh, lost wages. Usually they pay once every two weeks. 
uh, the medical bills are getting paid, uh, what should you do? Well, first of all, uh, cooperate with your doctor. Uh, you're going to need that doctor, uh, both medically and legally. So if they say go to physical therapy and you can never make it, <laughs> you're going to have a problem. Uh, if they say, well, you uh, need an injection or you need surgery. Now, surgery, they normally aren't going to require if you've got some big problem getting surgery. Uh, but do everything you can to cooperate with your doctor uh, because you will need them both medically and legally. Um, the way wage loss works uh, is for if you are off less than seven days. You know, let's say you get an injury that puts you off for a couple of days, uh, then you don't get lost wages. Uh, that's too minimal. Uh, they don't give you lost wages. Uh, but if you have an injury that lasts, lasts more than seven days or takes you off work more, for more than seven days, uh, then you will recover that first week and you will start getting your checks once every two weeks. Uh, your compensation rate in Pennsylvania is usually uh, two-thirds of your average weekly wage. Your average weekly wage is basically your before taxes wage. So if your gross wage is 600 per week, your um, uh, comp rate will be $400 per week. Uh, there is a maximum uh, in Pennsylvania. Uh, I think for 2023, it's 1,023 per week. Uh, so if you make $400,000 a year, you won't get two thirds of that. They also have a minimum and uh, in some cases, well, it, it's 90% of your wage if you're uh, kind of a low paid, work, paid worker. Um, what normally happens then is in most cases, when you're on workers' compensation, your take home is around what you're getting uh, when you're working because there's no taxes taken out. It's tax free. So uh, there's, it's not a bad thing to be on workers' compensation. Uh, your medical bills are all paid 100% directly. So uh, that's usually not a problem, although we'll get into how those problems can arise. So if you've done everything properly, once in a while, uh, the employer acts in bad faith. Um, last year, I had a case where I had the nicest guy in the world. Uh, he was in his 40s and he worked for one of the big box stores and uh, he drove the truck uh, delivering things. And um, it was a box truck. And if uh, I think most people know that on the back of those things, the door uh, comes up and comes down and there's a spring that prevents it from coming down rapidly. While he was lowering that door, the spring broke. Uh, he tried to prevent it from slamming. Uh, he got a big ruptured disc in his low back that was impinging the nerve. Uh, he reported it. He went to the doctor. Uh, they diagnosed uh, the ruptured disc, recommended surgery, and the employer didn't pay him lost wages. They said, we're not going to pay any more medicals. And the guy was such a nice guy. He didn't do anything for about a month. So finally, he comes into the office. And that day, we filed a uh, petition uh, to, it, it's called a claim petition. And uh, when you do that, uh, the good thing about Pennsylvania uh, practice is things happen quickly. Um, you file it uh, online, uh, they assign a workers' compensation judge. These are special judges. These aren't judges over at the courthouse. They only do workers' comp work. Um, before COVID, uh, we always had in-person hearing over on, uh, well, depending on the town. It, it, there's one in Uniontown, one in Washington, one in Greensburg, uh, one in Johnstown. You know, they, these are all over the place. And uh, you get a hearing in about a month. So uh, between the time you file the petition and the first hearing is about a month. So most of these uh, hearings are now done on what's called Teams, which is like Zoom. Uh, many of my clients don't have um, 
uh, the uh, technical capacity to do these things on Teams or Zoom. So I get them in the office in Uniontown or Somerset or Pittsburgh, and we get on Zoom from the office, and uh, the, we'll see the judge, we'll see the employer's attorney, uh, the client will testify, and uh, if uh, depending on whether they're getting benefits, if they're starting to get benefits uh, already, uh, and the employer is trying to terminate them, then I uh, start getting a 20% attorney's fee. That's the way attorney's fees work in workers' compensation. It's pretty well set by statute. Uh, if we're just trying to get on benefits, uh, like uh, this fellow that worked at the big box store, uh, there's obviously no benefits being paid, uh, but at least the testimony gets in. In an obvious case like that, uh, the employer's lawyer knows darn well they're going to pay and probably going to pay penalties if they don't get with it. Uh, in that particular case, uh, the judge set what's called a mandatory mediation. Um, that came up about 60 days after that. And the mandatory mediation is a settlement conference. And uh, there's a different judge assigned and the parties get together and we give uh, the employer demand and then uh, they start offering money. And in this big box store case, they honestly started offering real money right off the bat. And uh, basically we settled the case. Uh, they had to pay for the uh, surgery and there was a substantial amount of money that they had to pay on top of that because uh, they were getting out of paying uh, future wage loss benefits. Um, uh, but they had to pay the related medical. Uh, and the guy had the surgery, it was successful, and he went and worked somewhere else. Uh, but that's, that's the way uh, uh, comp cases can work. Sometimes they take longer. Uh, if there's a bona fide dispute where people are really have different disagreements, uh, I have to depose my doctor. And remember, that's why you're going to uh, cooperate with your doctor. When there's a big dispute, they will send you to their doctor. Uh, it's called an independent medical exam, but it's not independent. It's, it's for the insurance company to get an argument. And based on what he says, then the judge decides between the two doctors. Sometimes the uh, cases are mediated or settled after that uh, because after the doctor's depositions, we have a better um, idea of where the case is going. Now, again, in many cases, uh, I don't have to get involved. A uh, client will call. Um, the, they're being treated properly. They're getting their benefits. They're getting their medicals paid. Uh, there's no dispute. They go back to work, and we're fine. Now, sometimes that's not true. Uh, we talked about when the employer um, is not diligent in paying benefits, uh, then you file a claim petition. Well, sometimes uh, they'll try and kick you off, and that's either called a suspension petition or termination petition. That can come by in a couple of ways. Um, if your doctor releases you to light duty and they offer you light duty, you got to take it. Um, and most people do. Um, if you don't, you're in big trouble. Uh, right now, I'm representing a, a guy that worked as a flagger and he was released to light duty and the employer actually created a job where all he had to do was uh, sit at a YMCA and uh, say hello to people. Uh, and the guy had transportation problems and he kept missing it. So he missed the job and he got kicked off comp. Well, you don't want to be that guy. Um, if they offer you an easy job like that, take it. Go there. Um, at some point, the employer gets tired of paying you for doing nothing. And then they take you off the job and you're back on comp. Uh, but again, even if you're uh, going to this easy job, what's the difference? getting out of the house and you're doing something you can do. Sometimes uh, they'll send you to their doctor, who's usually a doctor up in Pittsburgh, that sometimes they're retired and all they do is do these things for the money. And uh, they say, well, you're completely recovered. And it's, it's ridiculous sometimes. So then uh, if uh, 
they say that. Of course, then I'll depose that guy. And uh, we'd also depose our own doctor. Uh, and again, the judge has to decide between the two. And normally the judges understand that the reason they sent you there was to get testimony. Uh, so there is a, a kind of a unwritten presumption that your doctor is telling the truth and that fellow is not. And there's a good reason for that. Now, sometimes uh, I have clients with very serious injuries and they're not going to go back to work. Uh, it's a permanent disabling injury. Before the mid 1990s, uh, you could get workers' compensation forever. And I still have a client up in Johnstown and he got injured in 1992, which is, uh, I can't even calculate how long ago. I think it was 41 years ago. He still gets checks every two weeks. He was in nobody questions that he's really a mess. Um, and he has been getting checks for 41 years. And over the years, they've made various offers. Uh, there hasn't been enough. I've told him, don't take it. And he's gotten 41 years worth of benefits for that. He also gets social security disability. Uh, he gets his medicals paid by workers comp. So he's in real good shape. Now, in the mid-90s, uh, the argument was, hey, uh, employers are paying too much for Pennsylvania workers' compensation, uh, primarily for clients like my client, even though, I mean, all he's doing is uh, getting the benefits that are legally his. But anyway, uh, so in the mid-90s, uh, they created this system where basically uh, you can only get uh, workers' compensation for 11 and a half years. Pretty much, no matter how badly you're injured, um, the uh, system is called an impairment rating system. Uh, the impairment rating system says that after 104 weeks, that's two years, uh, the employer can uh, have you, and usually you're examined, uh, by an impairment rating doctor. That's something really different than the other kind of doctor they have you examine. Uh, there's an, a book, a little blue book set up by the uh, American Medical Association that says how to set your percentage loss. And if you have over a 35% whole body impairment, uh, then you can get comp the rest of your life. Uh, if you're under that, you are set at 500 weeks. So when <laughs> they first set this, and originally it was 50%, uh, we're thinking, oh, well, sometimes we'll have clients with 35% or 50%. Nobody had 50% the way it's set up. And it's extremely rare that somebody has 35%. So I'd say in about more than 95% of the cases, if you're injured, injured, seriously injured in a work injury in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, you're going to get benefits for 104 weeks plus 500 weeks at 604 weeks. Uh, which is about 11 and a half years. Uh, and then you're done. Uh, now your um, benefits, uh, your medical benefits can continue forever, but the workers' comp ends at basically 11 and a half years. Now, now we're to settling these cases. Like the fellow in Johnstown, sometimes it's a good idea not to settle cases. Um, I don't push it. Uh, if I can be frank with you, a lot of uh, attorneys on TV and that advertise a lot push these settlements because you get 20% of the settlement. Whoopee. Uh, but I think a settlement's a good idea in certain cases, and it's a terrible idea in other cases. Uh, again, the classic is the guy in Johnstown where you don't settle a case. Um, but sometimes, uh, I'll give you an example. I have three fairly young coal miners uh, that got very seriously injured uh, in their uh, low f early 50s. So they weren't that old, but they're not going back to work. Uh, so they got on Social Security disability. Uh, the union guys took their miners' pension. The non-union guys, of course, couldn't. And they are getting uh, the maximum rate of about $1,023 a, month, uh, a week. Um, and I said, if you want to sell it, fine. But if you don't, 
you'll get those benefits for, uh, you know, the 11 and a half years and they'll run out. And they said, okay, you know, that's what we figure on and, and we'll just design our lives in that fashion. So that's the way if you don't settle. If you do settle, there's a few things you have to do. First of all, if it's a bad injury, you really have to get on social security disability. Um, now, uh, for social security disability, it's very difficult to get on if you're under the age of 50, gets easier between 50 and 55. After you're 55 years old, it's not nearly as difficult because you have to prove you can't do what you did for a living. Um, you're, you get social security disability. There's a rule called the 80% rule, uh, which sometimes means you don't actually get a check while you're on workers' compensation from social security, uh, but you uh, are on disability, even if your check is very small or non-existent. But here's why you need to do it. When you settle, if and when you settle your workers' compensation benefits, you're trading in all of that future wage loss benefits for a big hunk of money. Now, if you just blow the money or spend it rather quickly, then you've really screwed your life up. Being on Social Security disability helps. So if you're a well-paid worker, uh, you're getting no Social Security disability, you settle your case, now you're kicked off comp, so you're not getting you know, 4,500 a month, uh, but you may be getting 2,500 a month from Social Security disability because you're not affected by the 80% rule. So to some great extent, uh, that has uh, been ameliorated. When you're on Social Security disability, if you're able to work part-time, you're permitted to do that. You can't do that on workers' comp without losing benefits. So that's the way that works sometimes. The final thing I want to talk to uh, you about which we're getting fairly close to the top of the hour. Um, sometimes there's a, what's called a third party claim. Uh, in other words, there's negligence, not on the part of the employer, but on the part of somebody else. You know, you drive for a living, you're in an auto accident, it's somebody else's fault. Um, I had a case a couple of years ago uh, for a guy that was working on a uh, fracking platform in Westmoreland County. Uh, a, a large object was dropped on his leg and he developed a, uh, uh, a, uh, a problem with the leg called uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy or compartmental pain syndrome, which pretty much disables you. So we were able to get him on social security disability. He's getting workers comp. Uh, we sued the other so uh, subcontractor that dropped it on his foot. Um, we litigated that. Uh, we resolved uh, the uh, third party claim for $850,000. Uh, we had to pay comp back because they have what's called subrogation rights. And frankly, that can be helpful because they're on your side <coughs> in the litigation. Uh, he was on social security disability. Uh, he's a smart guy, so he has saved most of the money. He purchased a home when he got a good deal on it. Um, so he's pretty well set. In other instances, it's a good time to settle um, if you're about to lose your case. <laughs> you know, if you did something wrong and you're going to get kicked off, you may as well take a lump sum. Um, if you're about to retire um, or you have some ability to uh, work part time. So you settle you get your social security disability, you work part-time, sometimes that holds up on a pension, so that can occur. Uh, one final issue, and uh, we're almost at one minute, uh, and that is, uh, there's a thing in workers' comp called a specific loss. So if you get your eye poked out, uh, they give you a certain amount of benefits for that, 220 weeks, I think it is. If you get a finger cut off or uh, lose the ability to use an arm, uh, there's a specific hunk of money for that. Most commonly, it's for people that uh, lose part of their hearing as a result of their work uh, activities. And um, I've got a whole program on that that we're going to start, but uh, uh, 
that's the last thing I wanted to talk to about workers' comp. So this is attorney Joe Fishko. If you want to call me, 1-800-242-2412. And thanks for listening.